Hi, I'm Mary Mance from Twisted Yarns. In this video, you will learn how to change, carry, and combine colors to create tweeds, dots, and stripes in the moss stitch. When you mix the moss stitch with creative color combinations and stir in a little crochet magic, you create visually engaging fabric designs. Sounds complex, but actually it's fun and surprisingly easy. Plus, the fabric is two-sided, so it's perfect for just about everything, including blankets and scarves. Watch my video, How to Crochet the Moss Stitch Back and Forth, for details on how to make this variation of the stitch pattern. The link is in the description below. Then you'll be ready to take colors and the moss stitch to new levels. And you may just learn a crochet secret or two. Time to go color crazy! So now, I'm going to show you how to do the color changes with three different colors. And how to do it so that we carry the thread up the side of the uh, dishcloth, or the piece, whatever you want it to be. And we're going to chain, we're going to start the same way as before. I'm going to chain 24. Is I'm going to, in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to insert my hook under the upper loop and work one single crochet and a chain one. Skip one and single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one and then we're in the last stitch. Now this is important. I'm going to insert my hook into that last stitch and pull up the loop just like I was going to work a single crochet. But at this point, things change. And on this one, I'm going to add my next color, which is yellow. It could be any color, but I picked yellow. Okay, with this, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take the old yarn end and wrap it around the hook and bring it to the front, from the back to the front. So it's a, like so. Okay, I'm going to put my thumb on it and I'm going to fold over the end of this one to form a loop. And I'm going to put that on my hook and pull through all three loops. Now obviously that really isn't a loop and it can come undone, but to lock it into place, I'm going to chain one using both strands of my yarn. You see that? Now I'm ready to do the next row. So I'm going to turn my work, drop off my yarn tail, and in the just like we did before, in the very first space I'm going to work a single crochet and then a chain one. The next space a single crochet, chain one. Okay, here I am. I'm in the last space. I do a single crochet and a chain one, but my row is not complete yet. I still have to go in to the very beginning or the, the end, which is the chain up at the beginning of the row and pull up a loop, just like I was going to do that stitch there for a single crochet. Take my ending yarn, bring it over my first, the yarn that I'm going to be getting carrying and going on to the next color, bring it from the back to the front and hold it with my fingers. I'm folding this one over in half to form a loop and give myself plenty of yarn tail, put it on and I'm holding both ends of it and I'm pulling it through those three loops. Now, I'm going to chain one to lock it down and drop off the old color and continue with my new color. So, in the first space, I'm going to work a single crochet and see that extra loop, I'm going to just tug it up a little bit, just a little bit, snug it up and chain one. And now I'm going to go across just like I did before. But, I'm going to do a couple of stitches, but I'm going to stop. 
And the reason is, on the first couple of rows, you need to go back to this yarn tail and weave it in. Now, the yarn tail of the first, very first color is right along the outer edge, and that can be woven in at any time before you put the border on. But this one, it's critical that you get it in now. Otherwise, it'll be a lot harder to put in and get rid of, and there you go. Come back to your color, and now I've already done the single crochet in this space and a chain one, and I'm gonna continue across with a single crochet, chain one. All right, we're at the end. So before I go on, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna weave this end in. Then I won't have to worry about it ever again. It'll be just gone. So now I'm returning to my working end of this row. And I've already finished my single crochet in the last space and my chain one. But now I've got to get into that last chain up, the turning chain of the previous row, and pull up a loop. Pull this yarn from back to front over the hook. Now, do you see our purple is the next color up? And it's sitting there waiting for us because we're using three colors. I call that the chasing colors technique. Now I just picked up the loop and I pulled it through all three loops and I'm gonna chain one. Now I don't have to worry about that strand and it'll be waiting when it's its turn to be used. So at this point I've done my chain one. So I'm gonna just work a single crochet into the next space. Chain one and continue across this row. Okay, I'm at the end of the row. I'm putting my single crochet in, chain one, and then into that end. And pull up a loop in the color that I'm dropping or carrying. Wrap it over the needle and hold it to the front. Pick up the new color, which is there waiting for me, and pull through a loop through all those loops on the hook and chain one. What you've done is you've neatly positioned that carrying yarn right on the edge. Okay, turn and continue. And you're gonna repeat this until you have the number of rows that you want. In our tweed sample, see how nicely the colors are carried along the edge. It doesn't even require an edging and it's two-sided. On our second tweed sample, we use white and turquoise for the first two colors and a coordinated variegated for the third. In this case, I used edging to accentuate the various shades of the turquoise and frame the piece. Creating the moss stitch dots uses the same technique as making the tweed with one exception. You will work with three balls of yarn and change the color after each row, but two of the balls will be the same color to make the background. A second contrasting color seems to peek through to create the dots, yet the finished fabric is two-sided. On this sample, the contrast is very dramatic, while on the second sample, the dots are crocheted with a variegated yarn that coordinates with the background. This makes the dots less pronounced and the fabric far more subtle. On this end, we change colors every row, which gives you a bohemian look. In this part, we worked a series of two rows of each color. This is probably my favorite because it creates a sawtooth transition between the colors. On this sample, color sequences are grouped to create the effect of wider bands against the background color, like here. But there are three basic rules for striping in the moss stitch. One, you can change colors as often as you want, but you'll get a better edge if you follow the same process demonstrated earlier for adding a new color. If your color repeats often, you can carry a color up along the edge neatly up to two rows. Otherwise, end the color and then start it again later as needed. But whichever way you want to do it, 
Just remember to weave in all the ends before continuing to the next color. I hope you enjoyed exploring the moss stitch tweeds, dots, and stripes. Leave a comment and let me know which you prefer. And while you're there, please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos. Happy crocheting!